Humans of the Cardboard, welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Today, we need to talk about this. There is 25 different types for monsters in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh!, their konami does not treat them all the same some are better than others and that's just the cold hard truth about it so today we're going to be ranking all of them in order keep in mind the way i'm looking at this is not just oh how many good decks does this archetype have right now i'm looking at it more from a puristic standpoint which is that for example look at sprite new deck thunder based for the most part and one of the best decks in the game if not the best deck in the game um but the problem is sprites being thunder don't synergize with other thunder archetypes like it all right so for me i have to look at that and be like yeah but they don't really help thunder as a type in general it's just one random good deck that's separate from everything else so that has no bearing on how good i i view thunder as a type i'm looking about like oh if a new archetype was coming out that was thunder how much already existing thunder support would immediately make it better and if there was a p more pure like just thunder build all the best thunder cards in one how good could it be that's kind of how I'm trying to look at it. So keep that in mind as we go through. But let's get into it. We got a ton of stuff to run through, and I'm zooming through, okay? Starting off with dinosaurs. I think this is an easy A tier, whether it's Fossil Dig, Oviraptor, Conductor, so on and so forth. The Baby Sarasaurus. There are so many good tools they already have access to. Lost World. Um, I just think their way, like if, if Konami has stayed away from making legitimately good dinosaur archetypes for a reason. And it's because that structure deck made them like so set up to be broken if another good archetype came out. So yeah, easy A tier. Warriors, easy A tier as well for me. Um, I don't really think I need to explain this one too much. Um, there are so many broken warrior cards out there. I sold Rhoda at once. So just an insane consistency card for any... Um, any warrior strategy that comes along. They just haven't had a broken win condition in a little bit. That really feels like the only thing that they're missing, but insanely broken. Next up we move, oh, to the Tri-Beast, another A tier. Okay, so I'm gonna put all three of these together. I already thought about this prior. Okay, I think all the Tri-Beasts tri just deserve to be an A tier. Uh, when, you, when you have to look at any single new wing beast, beast or beast warrior archetype and say, hmm, is Tri-Brigade like tier one again? I think that means that like all three are like just as good, just because that synergy is so crazy. Uh, Konami has to make like mid-level to like low-level archetypes for these three archetypes because if they make them too good, it, it, this could just immediately be a tier one deck again. Um, and I just think Tribrigade's existing makes them B tier or A tier for me. Uh, Creator God, easy F tier. Don't need to think about that one at all. Oh, another one. Okay, so this is the same thing as like uh, the Tri Beast, but we have Fish sea serpent and aqua but i put them in b tier so when i think about these types they have that same thing we're like these three types just end up working together so much of the time it just ends up being water deck instead of fish sea serpent aqua um and so because of that i think the best variant to like look and like have an example of this is like the mermail atlantean list where you'll have like a little frog engine usually maybe a little shark engine now deep seas are in there and it's actually like a cool little rogue deck now, cool little rogue deck right now. Maybe the Atlantean structure deck, when we finally get a structure deck R4, hopefully next year, would even push it even further. We'll have to see. But they have a lot of tools that you have to look at and be like, wow, Moonling Glacia, Deep Sea Diva's a crazy starter. They make good use of Alky Fibrax. Uh, they do a lot of powerful things. They just need one more little wave to kind of tie it all together. And if they do, I think they can move up even further. But B tier for now. Zombies, a uh, high B tier for me. Not quite enough for A tier, but I do think they have a ton of really good support started off. I think they have some inherent flaws of just, they can be a little bricky inherently just because they have cards that want to be engraved, but not in the hand. But outside of that, they have a ton of really good cards, whether it's the Balladrock setup, Zombie World can just be a, a straight up insane floodgate depending on the format, um, and plenty other. Balladrock being a broken boss monster you just have access to be, by playing the deck like, Really, really powerful cards that you have access to for sure. So big, big uh, level up for zombies. Uh, Cybers. Cybers is high uh, for me. I think Cybers is almost higher than Tribeast. If you think about it, when was the last time we got a new Tribe? Uh, sorry, Cybers archetype? I, maybe it's adding Mister, <laughs> but like think about all the crazy cards a uh, Cybers already has. Whether it's Signet Mining, Lady Debug right or in the extra deck whether it's splash mage uh the code talker support extra deck monsters broken link ones that, that, that the deck just has uh, available so any new cyber deck that would come out in the future if it's like 
made for modern day, it might just immediately be tier one just because of like how, how good the already established cyber support already is. Spellcasters. Um, this one I would think would be really high, but when I really thought about it, it ended up just being B tier to me. It has a lot of powerful individual pieces, but they just don't work together yet. So I think I'm ba I'm just kind of riding on the back of those powerful pieces, whether it's the Dogmatica stuff being mostly spellcaster based, whether it's um, Spellbook Engine, waiting for Spellbook of Judgment or Future Support, whatever. I do think that engine could have legs in the future. Whether it's Magician Souls being broken, a handful of their like really good just spell cards that already exist for spellcasters that are just like Monster Reborns or Fusion cards that fuse from Grave. Like They just have a handful of really good tools. It just doesn't all come together yet. And I think it feels like they're like one archetype that kind of brings it all together away from like really being where they want to be. Which is cool. Next up, we have Insects. Uh, again, kind of similar to almost Warrior, but just less powerful at the moment, right? Uh, I really like what Insects have right now, whether you're looking at Resonance Insect, uh, the B Trooper cards being crazy, um, and just all the extenders they have access to. They really do have some nice pieces. All they really lost is Verte Anaconda. So if they got an in archetype, like Insect Way, to like maybe a new insect link too that it kind of gives the insect specifically a similar win condition that that um dpe gave them then we'd be like cooking we'd be immediately cooking with insects again i guarantee you i'd be playing them um, but i think every other piece is kind of there they have starters they have extenders they have consistency they have the ability to grind they just have trouble with playing through interruptions because they don't have an early enough win condition they have to get pretty far to actually get to like a legit result unfortunately um and if they can't get there they lose so that's kind of where they're at worms another b tier um for sure uh i think b tier makes a lot of sense especially right now maybe if you asked me a month ago i might have said a tier uh because sword soul won north american nationals uh but ever since poke came out they have take they've been put on the back burner i don't even know if this is like a tier two deck it might just be straight up rogue at this point and let's be honest sword soul is kind of just a good like actuality of like what a worm good stuff deck would be it's got the tenny stuff it's got the worms uh you know and the, just the best worm cards you can really afford to play and it's just okay right now it's not broken not tier one it's just okay so i moved it down to b tier still think it has some nice pieces if they get another wave of support worm wise down the line like they can move up but um otherwise just solid uh what is this is this, is this divine gods or divine beasts whatever uh f tier again f tier garbage i'm not playing, messing around with it dragons dragons are s tier i think dragons may be the only s tier on this list but they are so hella broken oh my god dragons are crazy i don't even think i need to go through it all it's like literally format after format they're like a legit contender and even if people kind of end up off them because they've been around for so long, it's kind of tiring and exhausting to play them. Um, they just get like, oh, Bist dead in the next archetype. Oh, crazy. Great. <laughs> this is like the best deck to play them in. So, yeah, really good. Fiends. Uh, Fiends, I almost want to put in A tier because they have so many cards and like so many cards that you read and like, oh, that's pretty good. But like, we've never seen a legit like full Fiend deck. I mean, if you want to argue BA is that, then like whatever i mean not really they kind of just like they're just kind of an archetype that happens to be fiend they don't really have great synergy with a ton of other fiend cards aside from like you know uh aside from tour guide and fiendish rhino warrior right like but they still have a lot of cards they have a lot of cards that are interesting they are getting the new link too that reborns any fiend monster from grave so that also has like some nice utility to it for the for fiend decks i still think they have a lot of cards they're just kind of in that similar realm of like insects and kind of spell casters have a lot of nice cards they just don't have it all together to be like a pure fiend deck or a pure spell caster deck just yet and but we'll see fairies fairies are interesting i think they fall oh, man this kind of hurts but i think they're actually our first c tier as you can see a lot of these 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 types to me are actually like quite good i think fairies are first c tier here i almost want this to be on par with fiend maybe i just I know no, maybe it is higher they do have like diviner of the herald and um like ava and stuff like that they have some really broken cards yeah I'll, I'll, man this feels so weird i'll move it up to b tier for now i'll put it right there with fiends 
or I could just move them both down. I, no, I, I gotta leave them up. I think for now. Um, there's a handful of good, like it's one of those. It's another one of those, like a really good amount of just like really good fairy cards. There's just not really a pure way to play like a good pure fairy deck yet. Um, but we'll see. Plants, uh, easy A tier for me. Um, it's right there with Cybers, I think. Like Rika now proving that it's like the best plant deck. I told people prior to European Nationals, plant, plant, uh, Rika's like the best plant archetype um, in the game. And lo and behold, it surely is. This deck's crazy. Uh, you know, they have multiple good archetypes. They have multiple routes they can build the deck if they want. Really, really good. Uh, machines, also A tier. Easy A tier for me. Uh, you guys know Earth Machine. It's been a rogue deck for format after format. It's no coincidence. Those cards are legit powerful. And I actually think it's better than people have seen as far as results go. I think it's just a kind of scary deck to play because it is kind of hard to learn. It's hard to really understand all the theory behind it uh, quickly. And so I, I think a lot of players kind of like stay away from it. But I think if more people played it, they would top more often with it for sure. Like way more. Uh, Pyro, this, oh my gosh, sorry Pyro, you're F tier, you stink. Psychic, uh, C tier. Um, for this one, it's like e Tally. I don't necessarily think Punk is like a really great, like splashable, pure Psychic archetype. It doesn't really have synergy with like other Psychic archetypes, but they do have some insanely powerful cards. Maybe just honestly the fact that e Tally's at three makes this C tier on its own, even if there's like no other like way that like psychics like kind of combine to be something more than that uh next up is reptiles i think this is also c tier for me i think people also sleep on this one um people definitely sleep on reptiles ogdoatic is slept on um when they had dp they were certainly better they kind of feel like they're in the same place as like insects they have like an interesting engine they just don't have like a reliable win condition they can get to consistently um they have some cool tools but like they're more blowout cards not like, oh, my main play got stopped. Let me pivot into DPE. We can't really do that. If your main play gets stopped, you don't really do anything. Kind of same thing with insects, right? Uh, Thunders. I think Thunders are D tier. I think the only one in D tier so far is Thunders, and I, I think that feels pretty right. Um, Sprite doesn't really move the needle for me at all, kind of why I explained at the very beginning of the video. They're fine, but like other than Thunder Dragon, there's like nothing else I can even think of that's like legit good Thunder stuff that like... Oh, if the right archetype came out, woo, thunders to the moon. It ain't need a lot. Uh, the last one is rock, which I think is another C tier to me. Um, no, maybe it's B. No, we'll, we'll put it in B tier, okay? I think Ad Emancipator's just existing is like so wild. And I think there's, it's not a coincidence that Konami hasn't really come out with a new rock archetype in pretty much since, um, pretty much since Ad Emancipator came out, you know, three years ago. So um yeah i think it's really strong they also have like multiple monster reborn cards they've got um cards that like just send rock straight from the deck to the graveyard they've got some powerful tools for sure and if they got another really good rock deck they, they could definitely take off uh again so i think b tier fits pretty well for them as well but i think that's it i think that's all 25 of our picks here today here's my tier list um i'm definitely curious to hear your guys thoughts down below do you think i'm kind of off my rocker do you think i definitely need to adjust these keep in mind please the frame the, the my, my thought process behind this i guarantee you i don't have people in the comments like what you put this here what about sprite sprite's crazy why, why is thunder deep here how's that even possible like how is aqua and beach here when like tier elements the best deck ever made dude dude yeah <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's going to sum it up for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please let me know your thoughts down in the, in the, in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next one. Subscribe if you haven't. Uh, uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Thank